Hello everybody um, and uh, welcome to Baby Communication Awareness Week um, 2021. Um, I'm sorry we're running um, a few minutes late. Um, poor Emily who is um, joining us um, today. She is stuck in uh, London traffic so um, yeah she'll hopefully be joining us. Um, really soon but I thought I'd um, get on here to um, start saying hello to you, start letting some of you um, join us um, and um, also just to yeah really welcome you to um, the week um, and we've yeah already had so much um, uh, yeah our, our, our social media feeds have been really busy with so much support and celebration for the week so thank you so much for that and um, yeah, we really feel great about um, um, the week ahead. Hopefully there'll be um, lots um, for um, for you to, um, to discover and um, to inspire you as well. Um, so uh, I'm sure many of you have just, um, like us, celebrated um, Infant Mental Health Awareness Week. Um, which um, yeah was a great opportunity to sort of together um, share about the importance of um, investing in babies and um, their social and emotional development and um, yeah how you, the best place for that to happen is um, through supporting the relationship with their parents um, and um, we feel Baby Communication Week leads really nicely on from this because, um, yeah, it's um, it's really saying if you want to really support that first relationship, then relationship is about two people. Uh, well, it's about more than one person, isn't it? It's about the parent and the baby. And um, we, through Baby Communication Week, we are going to be looking more at the baby side and saying they are... Um, active participants in this relationship they're communicating um, and they're born ready for interaction um, so yeah we're really excited about this week today we're focusing on um, how newborns communicate from birth um, and um, yeah tomorrow we'll be looking at why that's so important and of course we've got themes throughout the week so really exciting um, uh, Hopefully Emily will be, yes, she looks like she's ready to join. Um, so um, just before she does, I just thought I should introduce myself as well. So I'm Sarah and I'm the um, Communications and Engagement Coordinator at Brazelton Centre UK. And um, that is a quite a broad role, but I'm kind of behind the social media and our website, events and lots of other things, including this week. So um let's get Emily to join us um there we go hopefully she'll join any minute I can see there's people joining from all over the world hello Emily hello my love can you see me I can see you I can hear you I'm waiting for you to <laughs> well, let me just turn that camera off. There we go. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry I'm late. That's absolutely fine. That is real life, so we're all about that. <laughs> I, I, hope you've, um, I hope you've had a moment to have a drink and just... It's all good. It's yeah. all good. I just forgot about living in London and London traffic, but anyway. <laughs> That's all right. No, it's fine. Thank you so much for joining us today. I was just saying... There is a lot of people here and um, people have been saying they're joining from all over the world, which is really exciting. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, no pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> yeah. So no, we're um, having a, a nice informal chat, aren't we? So it's all good. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I, ha I haven't mentioned how this is um, our, our first um, live for the Brazelton Centre. So again, no pressure, but no, every, I'm sure everyone's a friendly bunch today. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So Emily, um, uh, can we start, will you um, introduce yourself for those um, who, who don't yet know you? Yes, sure. So my name's Emily Hills and I'm an occupational therapist. 
I work in a level two and level three um, neonatal unit in West London. And I also get to lecture for the Brazelton Centre, um, teaching on mainly on the ENBO. And I also teach for the FINE programme, which is a developmental care programme. And then I am co-author and, and co-founder of Sensory Babies, which is another um, on, um, online and face-to-face -face training platform. Amazing. And, and home life? Oh, <laughs> you really well? to, oh, my gosh. Anyone who works with me will listen to me bang on about home life the whole time. So I've got three <laughs> kids. Um, and a lovely husband who's currently shuttling me around the place because I fractured my ankle, so I needed a chauffeur. So he's had a lot of me going like, drive faster. Anyway, <laughs> and um, yeah, so 18, um, 16 and 11 are the kids. Wow, wow. You, I always find, Emily, you're one of those people that I'm like, how, how do you have enough hours in the day? Like, you're amazing, so. Bless you. No, I think I've spent my, um, my life winging it, which is... <laughs> Oh no, you yeah, do amazingly and um uh yeah, do check out um Sensory Babies. They have um they have an Instagram page as well, but um yeah, I really can't recommend more of their um courses. So um right, and um, let's let's get into it. So um the the kind of uh, title for the talk today is um the fascinating world of babies language and we just want to unpack about how babies um, are communicating from birth. Um, but I thought a sort of funny way to start would be saying, actually, um, not to dive in and say that everyone does know this, or I think there can be some misunderstandings and kind of myths about newborn babies. Is that something you've come across, Emily? I think, um, so understanding, um, yeah, I think so, absolutely. It's like we often assume that everybody knows everything. And um, yeah, you only, you only know what people have, have shared with you. But I do think the interesting thing about baby behaviour, which is really how we're, we're looking at, at um, ba early communication, um, it, baby behaviour kind of stays with you for life. And it's just like the older you get, you just get better at sort of controlling it a little bit more. But those sort of nonverbal cues are with you for the rest of your life and the other important thing I should say as well is that we're really looking when for me I'm really looking at sort of those those subtle non-verbal cues but um in terms of baby communication like in terms of language development and linguistics that I mean you honestly that, that you're speaking to any of the speech and language therapies as well they would mm -hmm. be able to really massively support that but um, yeah, so baby baby behaviour, it really helps guide everything we do and helps us support yeah. babies in terms of sleep, play and eating. Mm, mm, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I do find it sort of like a shame when I hear people kind of say like, oh, like all newborn babies do is just kind of cry, sleep and poo or or they're kind of waiting for something when the babies are a bit older that like they can't really yet respond and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it's just such a misunderstanding. I think um, what the, what Brazelton gave us is saying that every baby is social, unique mm. with their own sets of likes and dislikes. We've just got to learn how to read them. And that yeah. starts, I mean, like from the moment the babies are born at 22 weeks from the neonatal unit, they're really clear when they're feeling comfortable and when they're feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And it's just taking the time just to have a little look at those subtle cues. And it can really help in terms of how you're managing any intervention in the hospital, but also parenting later on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you say about Dr. Brazelton as well, I guess he, I mean, he's been a huge part of our uh, the transition in the way that we think about babies and when he was working he you know the really widely held thought was that babies couldn't communicate um and that he he really changed that um so um it's pretty mind -blowing. i think it was only in the 1960s that, that we only discovered that babies could hear 10 minutes after birth mm. and now like we know that they hear so early on and actually mm. Um, like we've like right now we're saying 24 25 weeks but actually they've just discovered that your subplate neurons for your auditory system at 12 weeks gestation so I think what we know now is going to massively change as well but mm. it's, you know we've come so far in such a short amount of time but little people are pretty unique and pretty competent right from the word go yeah absolutely and I think it's about 
learning uh, how they're communicating um isn't it so that we can we can understand them but um emily um we talk lots about baby behavior i wondered if you could um kind of give us a little um uh what's the word uh i forgot the word not description um of of what behavior is what oh, do we mean when we talk about behavior right so we're so rather than the words so it's looking at everybody's non-verbal cues so if you looked at me to start with running in slightly <laughs> stressed, in a state five i'm bright red my breathing's going a little bit faster but sarah lo does a lovely bit of co-regulation and calms me back down <laughs> but mm. they're the sort of subtle non-verbal cues that we're looking at right from the word mm. go so um, I, Brasselton have given us a really lovely acronym, um, AMOR, the language of love, which works perfectly in every language, not so great in ours, but um, just to really think about each um, subsystem. So to do anything in life, your autonomic system has got to be under control. Yeah. So your breathing has got to be good, your heart rate is going to be good, your digestive system, it's all, all nice even. And we all use our motor systems really nicely. So for most of us to sort of stay organized and regulated, we'll tuck ourselves back into what life was like in the womb. So we'll come back into midline, your hands will come up to your face, mm -hmm. and then you can keep a lovely quiet alert state and respond beautifully to me. So our amour is working all the time. So suppose um, I, you suddenly said to me, <laughs> well, um, I've got to go for a job interview tomorrow. And if I don't do brilliantly, then I, you know, I lose my Brazelton training license or whatever. <laughs> then my autonomic system, my heart rate's going to go faster. My color's going to go up. My breathing's going to get up. I'm going to get butterflies in my tummy. My like, your digestive system always lets you down. My motor system, I'm probably going to go into a lot of extension because I'm going to be stressed. <laughs> and mm. then I'm going to be either crying or completely shut down. I'm not going to be having like a lovely, quiet, alert state and responding to you. So it's everything we do in life is, is really about a more. You've got to have mm. your autonomic system under control in mm. order to chat to the next person. And when mm. you're feeling when it's not, <laughs> then it's really hard to access the curriculum at school have conversations at work or as a little baby you know stay asleep or stay in moments of of engagement and and play mm. yeah absolutely it's so interesting isn't it how um yeah these things are that are there as an adult are there as a baby as well and you know we can we can really relate to babies in in thinking they're just like us and yeah um you know we do we do need to feel um ready to be able to to kind of communicate and um i think you know the importance of just being aware of okay is is this baby ready to to communicate because for them that is a really exciting and overwhelming thing yeah um, and i think it really guides all our parenting so if we look how a little person responds to the sensory world and sensory input, we can guide what we do. So there's mm. going to be some little people who, you know, love to be passed from pillar to post. And the more people that hold them, you know, the better. They're like the roller coaster seekers in life. And then there's going to be some mm. little babies who go like, this is just way too much. And when you pick me up too fast or you handle me a lot, I'm going to have spit ups or I'm going to yawn, I'm going to hiccup, and I'm going to become really dysregulated pretty quickly. Mm. So we all need different amount of sensory input to make us feel good, but we have to, it, and it's never one size fits all. So I often wonder, like, you know, your, your sensory babies classes can be amazing, but for some little people, they're just too much. And it's so mm. that's why it's so important. We look at what the babies are saying, so we just don't mm. assume it's one size fits all yeah yeah that is a really helpful thought and there are lots of areas of looking after your new baby that it just helps to be able to think about what what is my baby saying um and um we're going to be we're going to be talking about that later in the week i think that's on um on thursday kind of just giving some um some kind of advice for parents on that um and yeah just being led by led by your baby yeah um, yeah so um 
sorry, I did forget to say that we would love to have any questions. Would we, um, Sarah? Would we really? <laughs> would we? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, please do. Um, there's a, I think there's a question kind of icon um, on, on Instagram Live, so do pop them in there or in the comments. Um, we'll, we'll sort of do a few questions um, at the end. Um, so, um, Emily, I wondered if you could also um, sort of share um, any nice stories that you had about um, kind of sharing with parents about um, their, their baby's communication and, um, yeah, how that was helpful for, for the parents. Do you know... I mean, to be honest, what's really lovely is um, is like learning together. So when you're like, if you're thinking in the neonatal unit, when we're caught side together, because as a, it doesn't matter if your baby's born at 22 weeks or your baby's born at 42 weeks, all new parents will do the same thing. You sit and stare and soak up your baby and learn about all their behaviors. So a really nice part of my job is is looking together and learning from the families because the families... Mm -hmm you know, have done all this watching and go, actually, my little person really loves to sleep with their hands up by their face. And my little person will tell you that they're really not enjoying the world. They'll go bright red and they'll stick them yeah. and they'll start hiccuping. So rather than um, me always me going like, oh, I see this. Honestly, you learn so much more when you go tell me about your baby and come yeah. together um, and then just sort of putting it in a, in a little bit of a, a sort of frame. And so where I work right now, we have little developmental, when we're winning at life, we have developmental plans next to every baby's bed. And we sort of have what I like and what I, what I find hard and what I'm working on. And we always try and do it in the more. So try and do the autonomic areas that are challenging and where your autonomics, you're having strengths. And I'm also like in terms of going home, this is pre COVID, Mm. work with a lot of families who would go back to other fam go back to their whole you know their extended family to live and you know they've been getting to know their little person for a good two two months or longer in neonates and mm. some families they're genuinely concerned going like well you know is my you know it's always your mother-in-law isn't it that sounds terrible but it's always your mother-in-law <laughs> going like is my mother-in-law going to get this and is she going to respond to these babies cues so doing an envo together as a family and really looking at where that baby shines and where they have difficulties is a really definitely lovely part of my job mm, yeah yeah amazing and could you um you mentioned the embo just for anyone that's joined oh. and is like what is the embo <laughs> um, uh, yeah I should explain that so the envo is a newborn behavioral observation and it's just a really lovely tool to look at baby behavior together so it's kind of like a depending on where you work and all the little things that you have to do, it's a really lovely umbrella for taking time and just looking at the baby and giving the baby a voice and sharing what you see. So it's kind of like mm -hmm. about building relationships between me, I'm a healthcare professional and the parents and then the parents and the baby. And we just, it's a really lovely way of learning together. But for mm -hmm. me, it's all about the baby's behavior. So you go mm -hmm. through a certain amount of items, but you're learning about, that little person's unique personality and they are mm. all so different also yeah, what yeah, i love, yeah. love to see as well is if you get to do a series of envos because then you really learn about their personality and then mm. just listening you know is that do you know we all change and grow as people but who stays in that sort of little way for for a long time or does it do they carry it to school or you know you're mm. having a little profile so early on is great yeah, yeah absolutely it says what age is best for using the envo so that would be 37 weeks um gestation to three months corrected three months so 37 weeks to three months but if you're born early you can correct it yeah yeah look at um, me asking there sarah i was talking looking at you reading questions <laughs> uh you know i was um you mentioned already but i was gonna just say about um about the kind of temperament and the traits that we see in babies and how um yeah as you as you said amazingly you get to know their own little personality and how you know amazingly that often does uh, you know some of that does continue and you get kind of parents who will say um like you know when 
when my daughter was a baby, she was, you know, she always wanted to be held and that kind of thing. And she's like that now. She's really cuddly now. And then my other daughter, you know, she she was much more kind of independent as a baby and she kind of wanted a bit more space. And she's like that now. And um, they really are just individuals right from the start, which is so wonderful. And it also enforces that idea that there isn't like a perfect baby, um, but actually, um, yeah, just getting to know your own baby and knowing that they're unique and you're you're getting to know that person um is it's not as if you have to wait until they can actually talk to you um that you can you can get to know them so exactly and i think just reinforcing that yeah that everybody has their own little rhythm to life and and Mm -hmm. it's never never wasted just staring and looking and getting to know their personality Mm -hmm. very Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I wondered if you could um, share a bit more about um, baby states. That's sort of one of the um, underpinning and foundational things that we obviously teach in um, in the EMBO training and in the MBAS as well. Um, and that is a really, I think that's a really kind of practical way for parents to start to think about their baby's communication is observing them and seeing what their sort of state is. So, well, basically all humans have got six clearly identifiable states. And the older we get, we just can hold these states for longer and longer. But when you're very new to the world, they flip from one to the next quite quickly. So Peter Wolf gave us um, five behavioral states and Brazelton moved it a little bit further forward. And he said, we probably have six clearly identifiable states. And these really come online around the 35, 36 week mark. So when you're born early, there are, your, your predominant state is going to be sleep and it's going to be indeterminate sleep, which isn't a clear sleep state. So we're talking about term babies here. Um, and so your first, um, if we look at the first one, so your state one is a deep sleep and your deep... Boy, the dog. <laughs> if anyone enters the house, he just goes mad. Anyway, deep sleep. <laughs> deep sleep is um, where you're you've got minimal movements, your breathing's pretty slow and shallow. Then you go, um, state two is your REM sleep, your light sleep, where you see the movement under your eyes. Um, and it's, a, it's where your sensory systems develop. And for grown ups, it's where we dream. So when we're having that REM light sleep, it's, um, it's when you're dreaming. And both sleep states are equally important. When you're born at term, it's about 50% deep sleep, 50% light sleep. And now at the ripe old age of 46, it's 80% deep sleep um, and 20% are um, light sleep. Unless I've been out for a night out and then it all gets horrible. (laughs) And state three is your drowsy state. So for adults, or for me, it's when I eat loads of sandwiches at lunchtime, I go into this really drowsy state. Um, (laughs) get heavy lidded eyes and you're not sure whether they're going to fall asleep or wake up and then quiet alert is what Sarah is modeling beautifully for me now where you have that bright eyes and you're ready to engage with the world and then state five is a really important part of development so for adults it's when we've been sitting in meetings too long and you start moving around or getting up and you're not quite comfortable but for adults Mm -hmm. we're adults And for little people, they might go red and they make all these noises. And it tends to be in the United Kingdom, we say it's a digestive problem. Now, Mm. it's it's a digestive problem, but sometimes it's that state five where you're really trying to organize yourself. And then state six is obviously your full on cry. And most of us, like new parents, definitely for me, I clocked the full on cry, had that one, no problem. And I could wasn't you know i could recognize sleep but i didn't always recognize the difference between deep and light sleep Mm. so really important just to spend a little bit of time with families going you know all humans have got these six states and what we're looking for is babies being able to go smoothly from one to the next Um, and that that's your ultimate goal in life Um, Mm. recognize the states and we know when we can engage when we need to do a bit more co-regulation when we need to just support the little person a bit more Mm, yeah or did I waffle on there yeah no it's really really helpful and um yeah I just think it gives a really nice kind of framework I guess for being able to start observing your baby and seeing 
what state they're in and through that state what they're kind of saying so if they're asleep they're saying I'm really happy asleep like please help me to stay asleep and if they're um you know calm and alert and they've got those bright eyes and and their kind of body looks relaxed then they're saying I'm ready to chat and you know that is really important to make the most of those opportunities because I guess when babies are really young those those times are really short aren't they um you know babies spend a lot of their time sleeping for all that brain development that they're doing um but they really love um that chance when they are awake and they're calm to to interact and that's them saying I'm ready um and of course when we're doing that we're also watching to see you know are they managing all right if they're going to need a break um, but yeah, it's it's a great time to to talk with your baby, and of course they, um, you see when we do an embo, the lovely um, way that babies will follow um, their parents' face and voice, and I think that's one of the the really powerful things um, is is yes, when you know a parent that really kind of moves them when they feel like oh you know my baby turned to my voice, um, it's really special, and they're they're ready for that connection so yeah. and I think yeah. those behavioral states just being able to recognize that quiet alert state and those moments of meeting are so important mm. and I think what is not so much the term baby but the the high risk baby or the the preterm baby you know you can get overwhelmed pretty quickly um mm. and so and then the the easiest thing to do is just to go into a complete shutdown and so mm. it, like you're in a sleep state but really mm. gone like oh my goodness the world is coming at me way too fast I'm just going to mm. so when we're looking at pain and comfort management on the neonatal unit it, we have to do a lot of support and training with our staff just to to recognize that if if you basically if you pierce the skin of a loving human being it's gonna it's gonna hurt and mm. so it, you, they're not asleep <laughs> they're, they're mm. Mm. yeah 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 it is fascinating though how babies are born with this um ability to be able to kind of um yeah help regulate the world around them and, and sort of manage all the stimulation and you know it's good to just remember how absolutely everything that they experience is is brand new and um you know the environment is so well you would call it like the sensory environment is is just so overwhelming and the, the sound and the light and you know being touched on all those kind of things you it. sometimes you have to just think about it to be like oh yeah it is you know there is a lot going on um it's so true Sarah and there'll be some like you'll have people in your family and people you know who go like it doesn't bother me at all just bring every mm. bigger badder faster brighter smellier and then yeah. you have people who go like oh my goodness, could you just do one tiny little thing at a time? Mm -hmm. you know, look at the baby. We, we, you can't tell when they're overwhelmed or not. And we're all so different with our sensory needs, but you just mm -hmm. you have to learn to read them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I, I had a question um, sent in earlier today, and this probably could be a good point to ask it. So we're talking a bit about um, regulation. Um, and the question was... Um, about um are there any strategies for supporting um highly dysregulated babies so <laughs> yes. um that's for you emily because i <laughs> i wouldn't know where to start <laughs> yeah. well basically you think like your goal in life is really self-regulation you need to keep your your act together so that you can go to work parent your kids meet your friends you can't you know you need to keep yourself organized and order but very few of us can self-regulate most of us rely on co-regulation so you did a lovely piece of co-regulating when I walked in here and I was like I'm late and I'm hot and the dog's barking <laughs> and you just calmly co-regulated me and so humans rely mass we're not meant to live on our own we're meant to live in tribes and we rely on each other for co-regulation and if we've got a little person who's super dysregulated and the world comes at them too much too fast you really need to go back to what life is like in the womb. It works the same until you're 100 years old. Mm. You chill out by going back to what life is like in the womb. So it is dark, 
it's not um, quiet, but the noise is calm and consistent. You're in a nice tucked, flex position. You've got your hands up to your mouth. The smell is going to be calming and consistent. You're going to suck. So sucking is really, really calming. So mm -hmm. those, so when in, if you're thinking like a little person is massively dysregulated, then always go back to how can I make it more womb-like and calming so that they can then access the next little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's really helpful. I, I, I remember when I had my daughter, just knowing um, about, just thinking about kind of almost trying to keep that womb environment mm. um, and, um, yeah, how that really helps um, helps the baby and just gives that, that kind of sense of comfort um, for them. Um, but they'll be honest, you'll have had a miserable day at work every so often and most people just want to come home <laughs> and tuck them mm -hmm. hide away. Or if you're in school, a lot of schools will have little tents in the corner where people can just go and go back to the, mm. they can just regroup before they have yeah. to access the world again. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, I, 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 I'm working this all out. So I, I, we have been, we've got, we've got people sending questions in a question box, which is really great. And I realized I can show them. So, um, so, um, uh, mothership. Uh, CS, what was the most important thing you have learnt from Brazelton's work? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, honestly, do you know what? There have been, do you know, there have been so many, but um, um, what, I, know, I just don't know how to go, don't, I don't want to go doom and gloom because there's been some case studies <laughs> where I haven't known where to start, but their work mm. at Brazelton has really helped me. Do you know what? It probably is the behavioral states behavioral cues and every baby can do something so mm. i work in a high risk and we you know we've had babies and you know who've gone undergone really complex medical needs and actually just knowing that every baby can do something and finding their strength mm. is a mm. really beautiful part of my job but um because you know often i'm working with my medical colleagues who they have to go in hard and they go through absolutely everything that can go wrong so just spending time with the families going okay things might have gone wrong but let's get to know your little person so let's let's look at states and let's look at behavioral cues yeah. and yeah. probably if i didn't have brazelton i wouldn't i wouldn't have known where to start so much yeah yeah absolutely i think he um you know dr brazelton was one of the people that really first brought this kind of strength based um uh tool i guess in in the neonatal behavioral assessment scale in the embass um and you know i think everything at the time was kind of looking at like what's wrong with the baby the kind of medical model um and so this was like hang on a minute look all the things the baby can do um and drawing out the strengths um and yeah i think that is really really powerful um i think the other thing sarah is the fact that when you're learning about enbo or enbass it's always show don't tell mm -hmm. and I, i'm like i'm anyone who knows me is like i'm a, i go a bit rogue i'm not very good with rules and if someone tells me to do something i find it really hard to listen to them but if you show me I'm, I'm all yours and it's the same mm -hmm. when you're working with families if you show through the baby rather than getting out a checklist and a tick box and just going through what you think is important it can mm -hmm. really yeah it's so good for your relationship with the family but also the family and the baby yeah yeah and I I was talking to a um I think it was a health visitor just last week and she said kind of exactly the same thing is just that um using the the embo gives the opportunity to show parents and it's not and it's not just telling them it actually shows them and it's actually makes it individualized for that baby and that family um and um also as you mentioned earlier as well bringing the parents into it and saying you know what have you noticed and that kind of thing because the parents are the ones that have spent honestly, all the time yeah. They'll have clocked it. They'll have clocked it. You yeah. learn so much from families going like, oh my gosh, I hadn't seen that. So yeah. 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 Um, right. Um, we have got some other questions. So I will um, go to the next one. Um, so um, Louise Race says, um, I work as a community OT in early intervention and mainly 
see babies um, four months onwards. Are there any courses or resources you would recommend for working with children this age? That's a great question. Oh, am, am I allowed to? Uh, am I allowed to? Me too. Yeah, okay. really, really well, happy. Yeah. Sensory Babies does a really yeah. lovely course from um, conception. It's first 1,001 days of life. So from conception to the age of two and really looking at you know, sensory development, looking at baby behavior, um, mother infant space, father infant space, therapeutic use of self. So have a look on the website or email me or message me and I would love to give you more information. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, a good point actually is uh, that I've got this question is um, what, what is it about, I guess, you know, the, the EMBO focuses on the first three months, what kind of sort of changes, I guess, happen after that kind of age that mean, we do kind of focus on those first three months. So it's more about the the reflex items. At, it's mm -hmm. more, so that we, at the ENBO, we use a lot of reflex items just to see how the baby responds to the tactile input, the body awareness, the moving. Mm -hmm. But the older you get, you get more voluntary control and those reflex items disappear. And in the same way, in terms of the social interaction piece, when you're little, you're going to, very much turn to sound when you're about three months old you're going to be like I I've got my own agenda here and I want a full-on conversation and you can rattle all you want I want to chat and play and so the baby just starts to get more control and more volition and so it's um perhaps not yeah it's, it's got the I mean I take the behavioral cues with me like to adults when we were covering covid took all that with me so it, yeah. it starts with baby but it's a really useful tool for all ages but it's just in terms mm -hmm. of the baby having much more voluntary control and their own initiation, initiation. Yeah. yeah absolutely and they are so much more alert even around sort of three months and um, the change is quite amazing actually because I've I've seen um embos done with babies really really young and I guess um that can be quite powerful for the parents but maybe if you're starting to talk about oh the baby can communicate at three months they're like yeah because <laughs> they're like yeah really yeah. like looking around taking it all in and they're kind of more it's I guess it's less subtle in some ways yeah absolutely um, yeah yeah um let's just see um uh so it just says can you talk about um what their behaviours will be yawning, hiccuping, etc. So I think um, you probably did give some examples of what we mean by behaviour. Yeah. Um, but actually, um, I guess it might be helpful to sort of say how, again, how like everything that we observe in a baby is has meaning, um, and so even down to um, kind of a colour change or some of those things like yawning um and hiccuping um so yeah. um so if we look if we're using a more to sort of guide us so when we're looking at autonomic we're looking at breathing and heart rate and color so little signs of sensitivity would be color changes so either going really red or going very mottly skin or going pale around your mouth so they're not like oh my goodness, disaster station, but that baby is telling you, perhaps they're telling you something about how they feel. And so you need to watch and maybe adapt and adapt your handling slightly or their heart rate might go faster or they might pause and hold their breath a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when we're looking at motor, we're looking at how, how they're moving. And we know when they're coping pretty well is when they're tucked into the middle. And when they're slightly overwhelmed by life, you might get lots of extension in the forehead, that hand mm -hmm. splaying, the arms going out, the legs going out. So anything in flexion, including little frowns, is, is good. You know, you're coping. And anything in extension is mm -hmm. actually, wow, this is way too much. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at your, your state, signs of sensitivity would be you'd be flipping all over the place and just look really just all over the shop. Mm. And your responsiveness is just like, you know, if I stared at any of you too much, you would have to look away. And for a little person who is just becoming quite dysregulated, they're going to look away and they're not going to be able to come back unless you change your handling and your adaptation a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's what Edinburgh in a whistle stop tour. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um yes, I guess we've talked quite a bit about um the the Embo today and um yeah, you can um find out lots more about it on um the Brazelton uh, website. Um and you know, if you have any other questions as well, just let us know. Um but um yeah, if you if you haven't yet done um the course we um we would really really recommend it i mean of course we would but um we yeah we really believe that it's um a, a really special um tool for just helping um you know bring all that babies um are able to do to life and just um such a flexible tool to use with parents in fact it's called uh, a relationship building tool so it's actually all about um, that first relationship and um, of course that we know how um, important that is to support so um, I think that sort of ties things really nicely to a close um, tomorrow we're going to be um, looking at um, why understanding babies communication is so important so today we're just focusing on how babies communicate and Emily thank you you have given us such an amazing kind of overview of all of that and um definitely left um us feeling really fascinated by babies so um i wondered if sort of to close you would be able to say um yeah why you think that understanding babies um communication is is a really important thing to finish up the <laughs> Do you know what i think understanding everybody's behavior is essential for life mm -hmm. um it's really like if you think like if for, for a work setting you know yes understanding the baby's behavior so that you can work with families understanding the family's behavior because if you're talking massively which you and you think it's absolutely fine and the family's got their hand up to their mouth and then the hand on the chest and then they're going changing colors you definitely need to stop and also you know it's all about working with your team as well so if your team are like overwhelmed they're going to show you those mm -hmm. same behavioral cues so you're sometimes the older you get your words don't always match your non-verbal communication so it's really important we look at it but also just to do like to to enjoy, to really enjoy parenting and have fun with it then it's yeah you've got to be able to see what your baby's saying to you because they are so unique and they have their personalities already sorted and mm. so just to be able to to move away from you know sleep crying feeding and to being like this is fred and he's my little boy and i, I love him to pieces yeah absolutely yeah and um, we have just got a final final last minute question but it ties in nicely with what you um just said emily so um let's see so it says um what um check oh hang on sorry what changes have you seen in parents mental health once they understand what their baby is communicating Ooh, well i do you know what in all honesty i think if you understand a little bit more about what your baby's saying in in neonates i'm talking right now then you're you have um like a more does not strength but able to do all your parenting and mm. not rely on other people because you're scared and so being able to do the nappy changes and take your baby out because actually you know your baby the best you know them way better than any of us who work mm. in the hospital and so it's just having the confidence that's the word I'm looking for the confidence and I think that would impacts on your your mental health yeah absolutely yeah and I think the um the embo is used lots as well with um with mothers who um might be um suffering with um kind of postnatal depression that kind of thing and there's some really lovely um kind of case studies and examples of how that has been really helpful for them to start um connecting with their baby but um There's yes search on the website so if you go to brazelton.co.uk or the brazelton one in america then all the research is listed there as well mm -hmm yeah perfect right well i think um that is yeah been a really great time chatting to you emily thank um you. Thank, thank you so much for joining us oh, please yeah, do really. no it's absolutely fine and um please do check out um sensory babies 
um and um and join us for um, the rest of the week as well. The next event we've got coming up is tomorrow um, it's in the evening. So it's 7.30 um, and it's going to be over on our Facebook page um, with um, Robin Balburnie. And he's going to be talking all about um, how understanding babies' communication is um, uh, the key to kind of the best possible start for, for babies. So, um, yeah, we'll look forward to seeing you there. And... Um, yeah thank you again for all everyone's um support for the week um we we want it to be something that everyone joins um in with we know that lots of people are promoting this um with their communities and everything so the more of us um the better so yeah uh yeah okay thank you again emily all right well i'll take care thanks right. so much. Take care. Bye.